Welcome to Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet you can find an uncensored version of me. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm here with another solo episode. Don't worry, it's not Am I the Asshole. A lot of people are starting to not like that, so I'm trying to figure out new and more exciting things to talk to you about, because this show has no rhyme or reason. It's just me shooting the breeze with you. Isn't there some phrase like, no, that's a bear shitting in the woods. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, so today I'm going over responses on Instagram. I Instagrammed storied. I Instagrams, I Insta storied a question. What is a fact or thing that you learned that absolutely blew your mind? Now, some of these I didn't know, and I'm going to try my best to fact check while recording this. But a lot of people said some really great things. Of course, there were some hilarious basic answers that I loved. Anyone who responds to these, I always thank you oh so much. I can't do this unless you respond. So obviously, I appreciate it. Now, shall we begin? I don't think we need to banter back and forth, right? I think this could just be a good go. Let's do this. So the first reply, the reply, that's not a word. A reply, is that a word? Let's type it in. I'm fact checking today. Resply. Nope, it's not a word. It's a real estate. No, it's a retail execution software. Resply on Apple's store. Okay, so that's not an actual thing. I got really distracted. The first reply I saw was from my girlfriend who said, The woman who fell asleep and was in a dream for 40 years. She told me about this. She sees on some some side of TikTok I will probably never see. And I don't know if this is true. This is just a story. So I'll give a very shortened version. Basically, this chick fell asleep and in her dream, she lucid dreamed and was stuck in her dream for what she said was 40 years. She said she lived an entire life and had a child and raised him. And then finally, one day she woke up and it had only been like a night's sleep for her. But she vividly remembered dreaming day for day. And in the dream, she was like, I'm dreaming, but I have to keep living this life because what else am I going to do? So she had a dream for 40 years, but it was only like a night's sleep for her. But she woke up and she mourned the loss of her son that she never had. So she feels she went into like another time, another universe. I don't know. I don't have all the details. I didn't watch her story. I'm also not her. So. Uh, Abby is obsessed with that story and I can have her tell it to you maybe next episode or something, but that was the first reply I saw or reply as I like to call it, but then we'll move on to other things. This is just now being told that women's sanitary products, i.e. pads, tampons, things of such nature, they haven't been tested with blood till last year, 2003. And Blood isn't menstrual blood. Menstrual blood is completely different than blood because menstrual blood, that thing is slimy. That thing's goopy. It's different shades. It's different textures. It's gross. So for my entire life, I have heard women complain about how they bleed through their tampons. They bleed through their pads, how their tampon will start leaking. But when they pull it out, 90% of it is completely dry, but just one tiny itty bitty little motherfucking strip has blood on it all the way down to the string. How is that possible? And it's because these companies have been testing with some fun little blue dye, I think. I don't know. With just water? Oh, thanks. No, not the same consistency, not the same flavor, not the same texture. Test that shit with the real shit. I don't care. Go. I know women will donate their menstrual blood to get products. No woman, no period haver likes leaking through their underwear, through their pants, disrupting a pool party, just ruining their sheets. No one likes this. No one does. I mean, there's probably some people who might have a fetish about it. I don't know. I haven't heard of this, but I'm assuming that's a thing. I'm assuming someone out there has a fetish about period blood, but People who have periods would gladly donate their blood to solve this issue. And I cannot believe only until last year have they tested it with blood. And I don't think it's menstrual blood. It's different. But hey, at least 
It's a step in the right direction. And that means the bar is on the motherfucking ground. <sighs> the bar's so low, they're doing limbo with it in hell. All right. Starting off pissing me off. Starting off strong. Okay. Someone said this, and I'm going to have to fact check it because I don't, I don't quite understand that every person in the entire world could fit into Texas with about an end zone amount of space left. I'm going to type this into the Googles. Can everyone in the world fit into Texas? In fact, you could, in theory, house the entire population of the earth into Texas at a popularity density of 27,000 people per square mile. This is about the same population density as New York City and substantially less than Paris, for example. What the hell? That blows my mind. So if the entire world lived as New York, we could all live in a space the size of Texas. I mean, granted, Texas is huge. Hold on. How big is Texas? Texas is 268,597 miles. It's bigger than Germany. We have a state bigger than Germany. That's fine. That's fine. It is what it is. So that's insane. So if like the whole world needs to flee to one spot, let's just build a bunch of apartments in Texas and we'll all live in harmony. What could possibly go wrong? Neat. All right. Well, that's a fun fact we've all learned today. Now, isn't it? Unless you already knew that, then screw me, right? Okay. This one is something I actually knew. And I think the world just doesn't, or a lot of people don't. So I'll repeat it. That apparently being lactose intolerant is normal. And then this person said, and yet we're still made fun of it for it. So I think that might just be in the States. Hold on. Percent of people who are lactose intolerant. Approximately. I love that we're fact checking and researching. When have I ever, when has that ever been in my job description? I did all things internet for years and said, I don't fact check or research anything. I am just saying what I've seen on the internet. I am not a news source. And here I am, typewriter at the fingertips. And by typewriter, I mean keyboard because this isn't the 90s or the 80s or the 60s. When did type, let's, let's fucking look it up. When were typewriters popular? The 1880s. So I was very fucking wrong. I was a hundred years off, but this isn't the 1880s. It's a keyboard at my fingertips trying to make sure we have factual knowledge. Maybe it's because the election's coming up. I'm like, I got to check my words before I spread them. <sighs> okay. Approximately 65% of the human population has a reduced ability to digest lactose after infancy. So this is actually a thing. And so many people just ignore it. So many people ignore that they're lactose intolerant because dairy is delicious. I don't consume dairy regularly. You know, I'll have a cheat here and there. I'll take a bite of this. I'll take a bite of that. Uh, I won't ask questions, but my main diet, I'd say 90% of the time, I am dairy free. We'll say 95. I eat a lot. <laughs> 95% of the time, I am dairy free, but not because that shit don't taste good. That stuff is good. Real cheese. Oh my God. Actual butter smother me in it, suffocate me, just shove it down my throat. Uh, but most people ignore it. Most people ignore their intolerance because it's so good. And they'll just be like, oh, I have a tummy ache. I ate too much. No, bitch. You ate a decent amount, but it's because you ate dairy. Uh, so if any of you out there are ignoring your lactose allergy, you don't have to just buy lactate. I consume lactate pretty regularly. When I decide to go out to eat, when I have a dairy day, when I'm like, oh, we're going over to someone's house, I don't want to tell them to cook dairy free. I'll just take my lactate. So, lactate is a magical little pill that once you start eating dairy, just take a lactate. There's no side effects that I know of. Oh, let's check it. Does the medicine lactate 
have a side effect. Um, you could have allergic reaction to it, like a skin rash, itching, hives, swelling of the face, lips, tongue, or throat. Okay. So you might have a allergic reaction, but you're not going to die from it. It's like, oh, you get a little itchy, deal with it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry if that happens to you. Uh, I, this is something I've realized in my later adult years. Most people don't like taking stuff to help them. Like I have a headache. They're like, someone's like, did you take any medicine for it? No, I just have a headache. My tummy hurts. Did you take Pepto, Tums, lactate? No. Why do we do this? And now I have a thing where I'm like, if it's not going to have, if it's not going to hurt me and it's only possibilities is to help me, why would I not take it? So I'm constantly offering gas X, Pepto, Tums, lactate to my friends at dinner parties. I will pull out a pocket full of lactate at dinner parties and everyone takes one. Cause they're all just going to benefit or have no reaction to it. No side effects, no downside, only upside. So it's okay to admit, here's the moral of the story. It's okay to admit if your tumbly gets a little grumbly after you eat some dairy, just pop a lactate and call a spade a spade. You're intolerant. You're not a machine that can just ingest whatever it wants but you're allowed to just take a little pill. They even have chewable ones. They're disgusting. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> All right. Before we move on to the next fact, I, I'm going so slow. I think it's the research. The research just slowing me down. But before we move on to something else, let's check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Skims. Skims is our sponsor for today. If you guys know me, you know, I normally find bras so uncomfortable and constricting. When I came out of the closet, I ditched the bras and went to either no bra or sports bra, but that's all changing thanks to Skims. Skims bra and underwears are the most comfortable thing I have ever worn. Skims bras are worth the hype for the amazing shape and support they give. But what shocked me the most was how comfortable they are. Even the underwire bras, I don't even realize that I'm wearing them. I'm so glad I finally found a bra that feels as comfortable as a sports bra or nothing at all, but gives me the lift that my ladies deserve. <laughs> Skims is creating the next generation of underwear and bras for every body. The everybody t-shirt bra from Skims is seriously the comfiest, softest bra I've ever put on my body. I have so many bras from them that I absolutely love, like the Fits Everybody Plunge Bra, the Fits Everybody Unlined Demi Bra, and the Fits Everybody Push Up Bra. Skims bras are made with innovative technology to give you the best shape and support. Plus, every bra is designed with the comfiest and softest materials, so you'll feel like you're wearing nothing at all. Skims offers a complete system of bra solutions for every need and style. Skim bras are also available in 62 sizes, starting at 30A all the way up to 46H. Believe the hype, Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason. Skim bras are now available at skims.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. If you haven't yet, please be sure to let them know that I sent you. After you place your order, select podcast in the survey and select my show, Rachel Uncensored, in the drop down menu that follows. Okay, we've got another fact, and it's quite sad. Some men only get their first flowers at their funeral. And then they said, this is actually so sad though. It is. Uh, Abby told me this fact about a year ago. And so we've tried to make an effort to buy the men in our lives flowers every once in a while. So, and a lot of them have either said, oh, you have never gotten flowers before. Or yeah, at my graduation. That is, people deserve flowers. If you see some flowers and someone's on your mind and you want to make them maybe smile a little bit, give them some flowers. It doesn't even have to be a bouquet. Just give them a single flower. I mean, that's a really sad fact. And don't, oh, if they have toxic masculinity, they're like, flowers are for girls. And I said, you say, no, flowers are for the people I love and the people I want to smile. And then if they don't get a smile out of that, why is that person in your life? Like just, I shouldn't judge, but I'm judging you. <laughs> okay. And then someone else said their fact is just because you're older doesn't mean you're more mature. I have sadly, hold on, I dropped my pen. I don't know why I'm playing with a pen right now. I'm not writing anything down. This is all screenshotted on my phone. But yes, this is a sad fact you learn as you get older that just because you're older doesn't mean you're more mature or smarter. So the whole thing of respect your elders can sometimes be bullshit. Now, it's not all the time, 
because there's a lot of people who you do learn as you get older, you learn things. Doesn't always make you, that doesn't always make you smarter. It doesn't always make you more mature. Uh, I would say more likely than not. It does, but just because someone's old doesn't mean they're, you know, smart and got it all together, which is just sad. (sighs) Someone said this, and this will forever trip me out. You've never, I've heard it before, but every time someone brings it up, I just get tripped out again. You're, you've never seen your face in person, only reflections. So you only see it in pictures, in the mirror, in videos. You will never be able to look yourself in the eye without it being with the aid of something. Like something is going to be there. It's always a reflection. It's always a recording. It is never your actual face. The way I see Abigail's face and squeeze it will never be the way I see my face and squeeze it. I mean, I could squeeze it to shame. (laughs) Sorry. That was weird. I squeezed my face and it just, I shouldn't have. But you're never going to see your face the way you see other people's faces. And that is frustrating. That pisses me off. I know I'm gorgeous, damn it. I want to see it in person for myself. (sighs) And like, same goes with our body. You never see your body. You only see it from the angle when you look down or in reflections. So like, you're never going to be able to see your body straight on. Maybe that's why we all have body dysmorphia. That's maybe why some people think they're hotter or uglier than they actually are. No, beauty's in the eye of a beholder. Everyone's gorgeous. But that might be why people see each other differently. You know, God, God, I hate that. I absolutely hate that. Someone said that Disney's Bluey is a girl and so is Blue's Clues. What? Hold on. Who is Bluey? One, who is Disney's Bluey? Bluey is a dog. I didn't, I, is this new? Is this something? Oh, 2018. Yeah. I don't know what Bluey is. Is Bluey a girl or boy? We're go- we're fact checking. I'm not going to let you guys fucking lie to me. She's a girl. Even though Bluey is blue, Bluey is a girl. That's because Bluey and Bandit are blue healer dogs. So she looks like her dad. Bingo and Chili, meanwhile, are the red healer breed. So their fur is cream, orange and reddish brown. Oh my God, Disney secretly defying the stereotypes. Is Blue's Clues a girl? Girl puppy, it's a puppy? I had no idea Blue's Clues was a puppy. The star of Blue's Clues, Blue, is a girl puppy who communicates with Steve and Joe through barks, which they understand. I love this. I absolutely love this fact. Fuck them all. Fuck them. Okay, a couple people said the Slender Man stabbing. Okay, I'm just going to see if I can look up a quick synopsis of this because I have no idea what the Slender Man stabbing is. On May 31st, 2014, in Wisconsin, United States, two 12-year-old girls lured their friend into a forest and stabbed her 19 times in an attempt to appease the fictional character, Slenderman. What the fuck? She survived. Holy shit. I, what the hell? Okay, there's a documentary on it, I'm assuming. Is there? If, if there is, I'm making Abby watch it with me tonight. Oh, no, it's just like YouTube things. Sen- Slenderman stabbing, the untold story. There is a documentary. Is it good? No, it's bad. It got a 5.8 out of 10 stars. Oh, it's very stupid repetition the whole time. Waste of time to watch. It's the worst thing they've ever seen. All right. Well, I'm not going to watch it. But holy shit. It is crazy that that stuff happens. Absolutely insane. People are the worst. Okay. Didn't like that fact, but we'll move on. Someone just said space. I know it's never ending and I can't wrap my head around it. Oh, same. The, f- I, the fact that we're a little dot in a galaxy and there's a, I don't know how many galaxies there are. Let's look it up. I am loving this fact checking researching moment for me. How many galaxies are there? I, was, I thought I was going to be exaggerating when I said there's millions. 
And oh my God, I've never, I, I have never underestimated so greatly in my entire life. It is estimated that there are between 200 billion to 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe. That means the, the ones that we could possibly see or observe or s- calculate. I have no idea anymore what that means. Most galaxies are 1,000 to 100,000 parsecs in diameter. What the fuck is a parsecs? Look up parsecs. Google can't even do it. A unit of distance used in astronomy to equal about 3.26 light years. They're, okay, and they're separated by distance on the order of millions of these light year thingies. I just got more frustrated with the thought of space. What? See, that's why when people are like, do you believe in aliens? I'm like, I, I cannot, I can't fathom us being the only living things. I don't think that any of us really know what they look like or what they do or where they are. But the, the fact that there's 200 billion to 2 trillion galaxies and we're just a dot in one of them. No, no, that we, I don't, I don't know about aliens, but we can't be the only living things. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's just like this exact thing somewhere else. I wonder if they got it right. Cause we're for sure as hell not doing it correctly. Yeah. That one will always trip my mind. Not a chance. Um, someone said it always blows their mind that microwaves are made of metal, but you can't put metal in a microwave. I think I saw Hank Green talk about this on TikTok. It's because the, how it heats stuff up. Is it like bounces stuff through the metal, like from metal points to metal. It's like things just bouncing around and microwaves are built so that the metal will go perfectly. Not the metal, the little shooty things that heat up your, I'm saying this terribly, but basically the metal in the microwave is placed perfectly. So the shit that heats up your food bounces around just perfectly to heat it up. Um, but if you put another metal in there, it's going to fuck up all the bouncies. That's my real layman's terms and dumb, dumb way of explaining that because that's how my brain explains it. Not because I think you're dumb, but because I am dumb. I'm, I don't think I'm stupid. I think I'm extremely capable in life. I just have to use layman's terms for everything. (laughs) I can get shit done though. All right. Someone said this. I, okay. So time confuses me. Somebody said, so many people said Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of an iPhone than the building of the pyramids. So many people said stuff that like, uh, Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. existed at the same time. I'm like, what? Uh, Rosa Parks died in the early 2000s. I, is that real? When did Rosa Parks die? Yeah, in 2005. So we, we just learn about history. And I think a lot of the times we don't put the timelines together and like realize how close things were. Like slavery wasn't that long ago. Segregation was in our parents' lifetime. Wait, well, it depends on your parents. I'll give you a time. When, when did segregation end? 1964. Yeah. That was in, if you're not your parents, you're at least your grandparents' timeline. Like that's actually insane. And then someone said, George Washington never knew dinosaurs existed because they hadn't discovered that yet. Isn't that weird? Time is weird and people get it clear fluffled, especially me. So it's, I hate history. I don't hate it. It just bores me. You have to, it doesn't bore me. The way history is taught bores me. History can be taught in a very fascinating way, such as this. I feel like I'm learning right now. So this is fun to me. Um, but yeah, it's, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. I just did. That's another thing is like, Things, we just were like, oh, we have this. People must have always had this. No. People, we didn't know that the atom wasn't the smallest thing until they fucking split it open. Science is always learning new things. History is always revealing new things. What we're taught isn't always truth. I'm just, I'm, I'm mad. All right. Someone said this and I just, I hated the fact. So I decided to share it with everyone. Your nipples are older than your teeth. And I spit a lot in my mouth when I said teeth. (laughs) I felt bubbles come out the sides of my mouth. (laughs) 
Um, which means, well, your asshole's older than everything else. Is That's the first thing to form on your body. Um, this is a gross one. Some people are allergic to cum. No, same. Not really, but emotionally. Oh, this is a fun one. We domesticated pigeons and then just set them loose and moved on. Not actually fun. Just what? They domesticated pigeons so that they could use them to deliver messages and whatnot. And then they're like, eh, we got telephones now. See you later. And now pigeons are dumb and never got back to being birds. They just want to deliver messages so bad. You know how how smart crows are? Do you think pigeons were ever as smart as crows? Crows are like, they've got a system on lock and they're loyal and they're mean. Pigeons, I love. Uh, If you are bored, just look up pigeon nests or pigeons trying to make nests. Oh my gosh. It's like two sticks and a hair tie on the ground and there's an egg next to it. We did them dirty. And even though I wasn't involved in this, I'm going to say we as a human race did pigeons dirty, man. What in the world? <sighs> we, we domesticated wolves and then we got dogs like very, very long time. Don't think that dogs should live the same as wolves. This is, this is, I don't like this. When people are like, it's a dog. It's fine outside. That's how they were made. You think a mini golden doodle, is it all still related to a wolf? You think a little mini gold doodle could go live in the woods and be just fine? No, not a chance. So dogs, we've domesticated them to be house animals. There are certain dogs, of course, that have been bred for ranches and things like that, like cat, the cattle dogs and sheep dogs. Those love it outside. They run the lands, but Shih Tzus, Golden Doodles, Labradoodles, any designer dog, that thing better be taken care of it in the house, okay? Dogs need shelter because we've domesticated them. Uh, but yeah, they're not wolves. Don't ever think dogs are like wolves now. That's, no. Wolves are a completely different beast. Uh, poor pigeons, though. Okay. Someone said, there's a woman who can smell Alzheimer's. What? I'm looking it up. The woman is this re- is real. Can a woman smell Alzheimer's? Oops. Alzheimer's smells like rye bread. What? Cancer like mushrooms and diabetes like nail polish. Wait. Says Joy Milne, who explains that. Who exp- okay. Alzheimer's smells like rye bread, cancer smells like mushrooms, and diabetes like nail polish. Joy Mil- uh, Milne, I think, explains in Let's Talk About Care podcast that her heightened sense of smell meant she could sniff out her husband's Parkinson's 12 years before his diagnosis. Oh my God! Can Alzheimer's be detected by smell? We found that an odor identification was significantly impaired in the prodromal stage of AC. Okay, so apparently someone can smell Alzheimer's, mushrooms, diabetes, and Parkinson's? I would have never guessed. What? I mean, I guess, I mean, dogs and cats can smell things. Like cats can tell when someone's about to die. Dogs can smell when your blood sugar's low and stuff like that. So I guess that makes sense. But oh my God. That's weird. And to figure out that that's what you're smelling, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Someone said this and it made me extremely uncomfortable. Your bones are wet. I hate that. I hate that so much. It makes my whole body icky. It hates my, it, oh my God, it makes my whole body icky. All right, I need to take a moment. Okay. Let's, uh, let's learn some more facts that may or may not make us extremely uncomfy. Here we go. That if a dog has more than eight puppies, she will grow extra nipples to feed them. I don't, I don't know if this is true. Can mother dogs grow more nipples? Your dog? Oh, ho. this, we found a false fact. We found a myth. We found 
liar, liar, pants on fire is among us. Google says your dog cannot grow more nipples after they're born. Neither can they lose nipples. Dogs' nipples become more prominent and pinker when a dog is pregnant or currently feeding puppies. And it may seem like they've grown more nipples, but this is not the case. (sighs) Nope. We found a falsity, y'all. I am so glad that we have learned to fact check and research on this podcast. Who would have thought? Rachel Uncensored, a show where it was supposed to be just me getting to cuss and drinking with my friends, led to me becoming a scholar, to becoming better than everyone else, for defeating Fox News, basically, um, and uh, somehow also making my ego so much bigger. So here we go. (laughs) Let's continue. Okay, someone said hot water and cold water sound different. The fuck? Let's look up that. What does that mean? Does hot water and cold water sound different? Cold water's higher viscosity also makes it to bubble less when poured. Hot water produces a higher pitch sound when poured because the energized molecules are moving around more rapidly. Oh my gosh, that makes sense. So when you're pouring hot water, it's going to sound different than when you're pouring cold water. Because the hot water's moving around like crazy. Oh, I remember that from science. When something is moving around faster, it gets hotter and then it like makes a moral liquid. Right? Right? Is that like basically correct but not? (sighs) I would have never thought about that. Never would I have thought about that. Nope. Okay. This one I'm definitely going to have to look into. The internet is cables in the ocean. Like what the actual fuck is the world? The internet is cables in the ocean? We're looking this up. Is the internet cables in the ocean? Under the waves at the bottom of the earth's ocean are almost 1.5 million kilometers of submarine fiber optic cables. Going unnoticed by almost everyone in the world, these cables underpin the entire global internet and modern information age. What? What are you saying to me? I've read and comprehended none. I've read it all and comprehended none of it. Are there really internet cables in the ocean? Currently, 99% of the data traffic that is crossing oceans is carried by undersea cables. The reliability of submarine cables is high, especially when, as noted above, multiple paths are available in the event of a cable break. Wait, I am so confused. I thought the internet was sending signals to um, satellites in the sky. I thought the internet was sky satellites. I didn't know it was underground, under ocean cables. What is, I have to, I have to figure out, is the internet ocean cables? Or satellites. It's submarine. It's submarine cables. How did they get them there? How did they do this? Only 1% by satellite links. This is stressing me out. How did they do it? How did they get? How did they do it? How did they put internet cables in the ocean? A cross-section of the shore end of a modern submarine communication cable eight. I don't know what that is. I don't know what any of this is. I'm learning so many big words. I think this is blowing my mind more than anything else. I think I'm stressed. I think this has caused a heightened anxiety within my soul. Oh, how submarine fiber cables are installed. What does submarine mean? The cables are laid using ships that are modified specifically for this purpose. Transporting and slowly laying the quote unquote wet plant, I do not like that phrase, infrastructure on the seabed. These special ships can carry thousands of kilometers of optical cable out to sea. I feel like a great white shark could just rip through that shit and we'd all be fucked. I feel like this might not have been 
the best way to do things. And yet somehow we've got fiber internet and I can upload a 20 minute video in 30 seconds. What is happening? Do you realize we don't know what's going on? We don't know. We're just like, boop, turn it on. And then we get mad when it's slow. We don't know what's going on in the world ever. We don't know how our food's made. We don't know how the internet works. I don't understand how a phone works. Like even calling someone, not even internet. I'm still stuck on like fucking telegraphs. How did that shit work? I don't understand any of it. I, I could understand like cars with gears and that stuff. But when it comes to like digital shit, I don't know what's going on. And I don't think I have the capabilities or emotional stability to understand what's going on but I'm going to make my living on it. You got that damn straight. Who? What? This isn't even, this isn't, this is, this is stupid. I'm, I'm pissing. I'm pissing. Who who told me that? Ella? Fuck you, Ella. Fuck you for telling me how the internet works. Cause now I'm pissed. I'm pissing. Cause my mind doesn't understand it. And I feel dumb. Fuck you, Ella. Actually, I love you. Thank you for responding and give me something that makes me passionate. (laughs) Okay. Oh, oh God. What? Hippo sweat is red. Nope. I'm calling bull. Hippo. Is hippo sweat red? God damn it. It's initially colorless, but quickly turns red orange, eventually becoming a darkish brown. Okay. And it says they don't actually have sweat glands like many other mammals do. This thick, oily fluid is secreted from special mucus glands in hippo's skin. I'm disgusted. I hate everything. Moving on. Judges break the pen that they use to sign a death sentence as a symbol that it is final. (laughs) I'm looking it up. Do judges snap the pen when signing death sentences? Once written or signed, the judges have no power to review or evoke the judgment. So the nib is broken so that the judge may not think of reviewing his own judgment. The practice is symbolic of a belief that is a pen that is used to take away a person's life should not be used ever again for other purposes. Okay, that I can kind of understand, like the same pen you used to kill a human being, you used to write a grocery list. Okay. That, but like they throw it away or I don't know. It just, I had this vision when I read it that like a judge like signed it and then look, held it up in front of everyone and went pop and like broke it in half. That could have been used. That maybe that could have been it, but like maybe like, like dedicate a special pen to it that like no one really, you don't ever talk about and you get to keep it in a way. I don't know. It seems, I understand it, but it also seems like super dramatic. But also at the same time, I completely now understand, like, let's not take away a life and then use that same thing to write a little note or draw a little doodle. It's all weird. That's all weird. Oh my God. Someone says breasts, switching gears. (laughs) Someone said breast sizes go all the way up to Z. That has to be so painful. Uh, you know, we all want to look up what a Z size bra is. A Z sized bra, because that, that girl, whoever has a Z sized bra, their back is hurting. Images. I don't even think there's an image of it. I don't see a single image of a Z size bra. Oh, I, oh, I think I found it. Yeah. That, I don't know if that's real, but oh my God. Yeah, there's, there's a lady out there with a Z-sized bra. She's she going to have back pains for the rest of her life. I feel so bad for her. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Someone said that elephants are pregnant for two years. You're lying. How long are elephants pregnant? 18 to 22 months. Asian elephants is 18 to 22 months. African bush elephant is 22 months. Oh, I am so sad for those mothers. That's, just, that's terrible. That is so sad. <sighs> I had no idea. Is that why, is like, is the elephant population, that, I mean, that explains why there's not an overpopulation of elephants. Is the elephant 
population going down. Oh, it's dropped 50% over the last three generations and they're still in decline today. You guys, I'm mad about that. Oh, you could go to, is it panda.org? Where is it? Oh, where did I used to donate? I stopped because apparently I'm a terrible person. I just forgot to renew. I used to adopt animals from a certain website. Was it the World Wildlife Fund? That doesn't seem right. Oh, you can do it there too. Does anyone remember? I used to donate. I used to like, I got Abby one when we first started dating. I would have renewed. They must have not sent an email. Did they shut down as a company? Oh my God. I was on auto renew and I used to have a bunch of different animals. I, I used, could quote unquote adopt, but I really like you just say you're adopting that one and then your money goes to them every month, but really you're just giving money to the organization and they help animals just, you know, broadly. What was, it was like someone with an S like you guys don't know, but I used to donate to this place and I was on auto renew and I'm just now realizing over the last two years, I don't think I've heard anything about them. And I haven't asked me to renew adoption and I know they're not taking money from me anywhere. It's like the Sherwin, the Sher something life anim, animal rescue. They must've gone under. Well, that's sad. I kind of want to look into that after I'm done with this. Anyway, everyone go adopt an animal, help the, help everybody. Okay. Uh, oh, this one, this one blew my mind. The beginning of the day starts at night. I literally heard this today and I'm shook still. The beginning of the day starts at night. I hate that. I don't like that. That's dumb. Because I, I'm someone that's always like, it's not tomorrow until I've, I've woken up or the sun's at least risen. It's one of the two. Either the sun's got to rise or I've got to rise. And then it's daytime. Then it's the next day. But at midnight? No, fuck that shit. Oh my God, this one. I want to look this up. Deaf people are known to use sign language in their sleep. Instead of sleep talking? Let me look this up right now. Have deaf people signed in their sleep? Some people who have learned sign language do acute. Hmm? Some people who have learned sign language do occasionally use it in their sleep. There's not a lot of scientific data, but one 2017 case study describes a seven-year-old man with severe hearing impairment who also had rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder. That's that makes sense. We talk in our sleep. We mumble in it. It would make sense that someone that uses sign language as their form of communication would then talk in their sleep, but doing it in their way. Oh, that's crazy. Also, the same person said snails have teeth. That's, no, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about that. And that ants don't have lungs. How do they breathe? What? Do ants have lungs? I'm looking this shit up. They don't. Instead, they have their own ways of respiration to help the transportation of oxygen around their bodies. They breathe in oxygen through spiracles, which are a series of holes. Oh, I hate this. This is making me grossed out. Located on the sides of their bodies. This is moving on. This has made me just so uncomfortable. Okay. You guys have a lot of weird animal facts. And again, we don't know what's going on in the world. We just don't. We just go, okay, and just keep on moving. A manatee's nipples are in their armpit. I'm looking it up. Where are manatees? Nipples. The shit in my search bar today. The pelvic vestige are attached. A manatee's mammary glands, milk glands, and teats, one per side, are located behind the four limbs. So in their armpits. I'm looking up a picture. I looked up manatee's nipples and I'm not getting a single image. Oh, I've got one of someone touching it. And they are in fact in their armpit. Oh, I see it. It's a fact. I'm looking at a picture of it right now. Oh, and there's one there. there, There's one breastfeeding or armpit feeding. (laughs) This manatee is armpit feeding its babies. I would have never guessed it. I mean, that makes, that makes sense. Like if nipples were in the armpits, I don't think that would be a bad thing. I feel like that's totally normal. And you like lift up your armpits, feed the baby. This actually seems like completely fine to me. Didn't know about it, but I'm fine with it. What is this episode? Oh my gosh. All right. We're going to leave with this last one right now. That woodpeckers wrap their tongue around their brain 
to protect it because they're pecking so hard. What? Yes, I've Googled it. Having its tongue wrapped around the back of its brain doesn't just give a woodpecker somewhere to snore a long appendage. It also helps protect the bird's brain from injury during high speed pecking. I'm looking at images and they've done a little diagram. Oh my God. It has like a little canal around its whole fucking head that it wraps its t- Oh, I don't like that. Oh, my, oh, my whole body wants to get rid of it. I want to get rid of this image. Oh, look it up. Everybody go look it up. I hate it so much. I want, I want everyone else to see it and I hate it and it's disgusting and I love it. Oh, my body hurts. Yeah. All right. I'm going to end this. I'm ending this. I'm ending this. I hope everyone has learned some things. I hope everyone is extremely proud of me for learning how to fact check and research today because I'm pretty proud of me and I think everyone else should be. (laughs) But I very much enjoyed this. If you did too, please let me know down below. Uh, Also, if there's ever anything you want me to talk about or do on this podcast, please let me know. I'm here to entertain you. I'm having fun putting things on the Insta story and reading them, responding to them. I really like that. And I hope you guys do too. But if you don't, let me know. If you do, let me know. Just give me some feedback. All right. I'm here for you. And uh, we're all here to just get through it and have some fun while we do. But please subscribe. Please follow. Turn on your bell notifications. It helps me out. It helps you out. And yeah, other than that, I love you guys. And I think next week I'm having my mom and Abigail both on the same episode. I don't think you guys have ever seen them interact online. Have you? It's my favorite. (laughs) So I hope you all enjoy. All right. I'm out and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Rachel Uncensored, the only place on the internet where you can find the uncensored version of me, Rachel Ballinger. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, or follow, or do whatever this platform tells you to do so that you can get notified every time I post a new episode. Love ya!